Perhaps the worst loss in Jim Harbaugh's six seasons at Michigan's coach. So I want you guys to go down in the comments. Let's get this party started by just letting out your anger in the comments below. Our video yesterday had something like a thousand comments. I'm guessing this one's going to get even more. We've got our Michigan football mailbag. Your questions following a devastating loss to Michigan State yesterday. Coming up on the Michigan Football Report right now. What a terrible weekend it's been for Michigan football fans, and we've got some more news breaking here in a second. I am your host, James Yoder. This is the Michigan Football Report, a day removed from perhaps the most shocking loss we've seen from this Michigan football program in half a decade more. I'm going to let you guys decide that here in a few minutes. But some late-breaking news here I want to get to. Bob Shoup, the secondaries coach for the University of Michigan, safeties coach, I'm sorry, University of Michigan football program, Three-year defensive coordinator for Mississippi State, came to Michigan in February, and reports here in the last few hours that he hasn't been coaching with the program in six plus weeks. And these are not, it's not a health-related absence, is what we're seeing out there. This is not a story we're breaking that's been put out there, but of course, we are going to bring it to you. Unconfirmed rumors of a permanent departure from the program. So that means one. Michigan's a public university, so if they fired him, they probably should announce that, take him off the website. But nevertheless, they got to post the job. Interim role has been filled by Ashan Larkins, right? I've never heard of him. All we could find out about him is that Michigan announced his hire in February of 2019, moved with the program for almost two years, his second season. Uh, prior to that, he had been, and we had to actually go to LinkedIn to find this out because Michigan doesn't put out a lot of details on this. He had been the second, or the linebackers and special teams coordinator, linebackers coach, special teams coordinator for the Citadel for about 12 or 13 seasons, 2016 to 2019. So Bob Shoup, no longer with the program in a full-time capacity, a lot of, there's going to be a lot of speculation until Jim Harbaugh says something definitive on this. Was he fired? Is there something else going on in his life and he just can't go to the field? Is it corona-related? He doesn't feel comfortable? I don't know what the answer is, but they've got a pretty young guy kind of filling things in. And with the stats that Michigan State put up yesterday uh, passing, it doesn't certainly bode well for this program that you've got a, uh, an analyst filling in for your, you know, your big-time splash hire in the secondary. Let's jump into it. Instagram at Michigan Football Report. If you haven't followed, I, the Michigan State haters were in the comments, so I made it private at Michigan Football Report. All in word, go follow on Instagram. Let's take it to the questions right now. First question coming in from uh, big time at dat boy CJ with a zero instead of an O. Man, you, you kids are you kids are just funny these days. Fire Jimmy Harbaugh or let his contract expire. I don't think those are both options that we can choose from. Uh, I think if you let his contract expire, he's probably not going to return to the field next year with an expiring contract. It's so rare that Jim Harbaugh is the only coach in all of college football, all of you know, Division I, 130 programs, that has less than two years on his contract in general. So you're not going to go to one without extending him. So a decision will be made for Jim Harbaugh after this season one way or another. They're going to have to give him at least a three-year extension or – they're going to have to let him go. And if they let him go, I'm guessing it'll be some sort of mutual buyout where, you know, Michigan takes less than what they or pays less than what they would owe, give Harbaugh the opportunity to go pursue another job if that's what he wanted to do in the offseason in enough in, in kind of the time window he'd have available to him. But Harbaugh took a 10% pay cut. Michigan's laid a lot of people off in the athletic department because of revenue loss from coronavirus and from no fans in the stands. So it's going to be a really interesting situation if this season goes sideways, has three or four losses in an eight-game season in the ninth game championship week. I'm really interested to see what happens. Another question here coming up from Jalen West. Who needs to go first, Jim or Don? And they're probably going to, you know, if they end up going, it might be out going out together after this season. But it should have been Don after last year. And there's really no excuse that Don Brown got the opportunity to return this year because he has proven he doesn't have the formula to win big games and he doesn't have the formula to beat Ohio State. So what else are you looking for? And some people, uh, they say this about Harbaugh. Well, who else would we get? Or who, who would do this? Who would do that? He's always top five defense. And I understand those things look good, that he has a top five defense and they do well in XYZ and they develop certain players here and there. But if your objective is to beat Ohio State, if your objective is to shut down the Buckeyes, win a Big Ten championship, you have seen what you want to see out of Don Brown. There's nothing left to see. So what are you waiting for? There's a thousand guys out there that would 
give up 60 points to Ohio State as your defensive coordinator. So if that's your, if that's the level you're going for, hire anybody. I'll come in. We'll just run the same Madden I run in EA Sports College Football if you're looking up to give 60 to Ohio State. But Don Brown might give up 70 to Ohio State this year, so I'm not sure what's going to happen. So the answer to the question is Don Brown should have happened a year ago, but it might be a card Jim Harbaugh does to save his job. Hey, I'll, I'll retool the staff. I'll do this, do that. Give me a two-year extension. Give me a three-year two, three extension. We'll see what happens. It's going to be a crazy next two months. Get us to 9,000 subscribers, please. Best month in history in October. Most subscribers we've ever gained in one month. So keep it rolling. We're only uh, 162 subscribers away from our 9,000 goal. So thank you so much to those who have. If you haven't, if you're one of the 20,000 people who watched our post-game show yesterday from my kitchen, Make sure you guys subscribe too if it's your first time watching. So subscribe to the channel. We appreciate it. We're going to be here with you every day no matter if Michigan wins four games, six games, or runs the table and beats Ohio State. We'll be with you. Question coming up from Dustin Mead. Is this Jim Harbaugh's worst loss? It's a damn good question. So I'm just going to ask you guys. I almost swore there, Tom. I almost swore. I said damn good question. I'm going to ask you guys this question. It's down to two games in my opinion. It is 2016 at Iowa, number two team in the country, and I think your 10th game of the year. Uh, it was Iowa, Indiana, Ohio State at the end of the game. So 9-0 Michigan goes into Indiana, number two in the country, uh, to Iowa. They lose that game. An absolutely mind-numbling, mind-boggling loss for, for Michigan at that time with what they had on the line. Because had they won that game, they'd probably still go to the playoff in 2016, even with the loss to Ohio State. That's how wacky of a year that was. Or was it yesterday? 24 points at one point the spread was. I think the game time line was 21 and a half, 21, something like that. What's the bigger loss, the most embarrassing, the worst loss in the Jim Harbaugh era? You know, instant reaction from me yesterday was, it was Michigan State. Here in my ear, it's got to be Iowa, right? I don't know. Type 1 for Iowa in 2016. Type 2 for Michigan State. I'm going to pin this one down below. really want to know what you guys have to say about it. If you didn't get in on the Bet US promotion we told you about on Friday, they felt really bad for you guys. They said, oh my gosh, Michigan, your fans, this, everything that's going on this program, we thought things were going to go great. Everyone wanted these jerseys. So we're going to extend this for you one more week. So if you didn't get in the promo, BetUS is our sportsbook partner for the season. Chatsports.com slash go blue to go sign up and deposit. When you deposit, use that promo code go blue. And if you do it before kickoff on Saturday against Indiana, noon Eastern, we will send you a Michigan football Jordan brand jersey. To redeem it, make sure you deposit. Make sure you use that URL. Don't mess it up because then a lot of work comes to our you know, to, to our end to, to verify you. Email us, goblue at chatsports.com. We'll get your information. We'll confirm. We'll get one shipped out to you in a matter of days. Bet US Chat Sports hooking you up with Michigan football jerseys for one more week to kind of uh, soften the blow of that devastating loss to Michigan State. Next question up from Quinn Pollock. Thanks so much for following Instagram, Quinn. Appreciate all the support. Will Michigan be able to stop Chris Olave and Garrett Wilson? I just had to put this one in here for the pure comedy of it. Because a three-star wide receiver from Georgia that I don't think had any SEC offers named Ricky White put up eight catches, 196 yards, and a touchdown against Michigan yesterday, right? Just think about what we're saying there. A three-star Michigan State quarterback with Rocky Lombardi as his quarterback put up 200 yards, his quarterback, 200 yards, eight catches. I think it was five, maybe four catches over 30 yards, two over 50 for one player. That's unbelievable. So were they able to stop Chris Olave and Garrett Wilson? Did you see Ohio State yesterday against Penn State? Did you see him in the opener against Nebraska? If both these guys don't get 250, I'll be surprised because they're the best one-two combo in America from a receiving core with Justin Fields playing the best football in the country. I don't know what you're going to happen, but I really think the uh, the the Don uh, the the uh, Ryan Day uh, claim they're going to drop half a hundred on Michigan, drop a hundred points. It's not out of the realm of possibilities at this point. But I want to ask you guys predict the score. Not this game against Indiana. Not Saturday at noon uh, in Bloomington. Predict the Michigan Ohio State score, December 12th. Buck, Michigan will head down to Ohio State to play the Buckeyes. I, I mean, w with this secondary, it's going to be a bloodbath because Michigan could score 75, and I still think they'd lose by 10, right? That's, that's what we're dealing with right here. But predict the score. Go down below. Um, it's going to be a lot of hilarity reading these comments, but I think you guys are just as fired up about Michigan and the secondary as I am. So go ahead and predict it right below. Next question up from LT56er. What's the reason of the decline in recruiting on defense? Well, 
it's one of the things that I harped on back in March and April. I'll single-handedly take credit. I put out some damning information. Michigan hadn't had a commitment in the 2021 class in over a year. Matt Dudek, you're a sham. And all of a sudden, they start recruiting, get like 20 commits in a six, seven-week period. And uh, a lot of people thank me for that. So appreciate those of you who, who acknowledge it. But it's all recruiting. When you see the type of offense Ohio State has shifted to over the last three seasons, and you don't have really anybody to play cornerback right now, it's mind-boggling uh, for me to even think about. So let's take a look at the recruiting classes recently. 2020 class, Selden and Darian Green-Warren, four-star guys, haven't seen the field much at all, if at all, that I've seen. Uh, 2019 class, Jalen Perry came in as your savior kind of yesterday to Vincent Gray and Gmon Green. Didn't really do anything, struggled a little bit. DJ Turner, haven't seen him on the field. So there's two recruiting classes, four players, zero have shown they can get it done. Freshman, sophomore. 2018 class, Gmon Green, huge liability yesterday after a decent game against Minnesota. Sammy Fawson, haven't seen him at all. And Vincent Gray, big time liability. 2017 class, you got Ambry Thomas, that's all I left. So those are your cornerbacks. I don't know if you got a single player that can play anything there. Uh, Ambry Thomas is out there thinking he's going to be a third-round draft pick, won't get drafted, and then you've got seven guys who have played as bad against the pass over two weeks of probably any secondary we've ever seen uh, in Michigan football history. Next question up from John Sposita. Why do we never look prepared against Michigan State and Ohio State? Our players do not look like they want to win. And I felt this firsthand, right? Um, 2015 game. Uh, you go to the big house against Ohio State, it's always got a vibe, it's always got some energy in it. And you walked in and it felt like you were walking into Jim Harbaugh's uh, you know, funeral, <laughs> if, if you want to go that morbid with it, because it was just a, uh, just a silent crowd, no rah-rah. Same thing in 2018, I walked into the, the shoe down in Columbus for the road game, thinking Michigan's going to win this, get to the playoff, and the Michigan football players look like they were going through the motions. It was telling yesterday, I think, whenever Michigan needed a big play and they made one, that no one was getting excited. So I agree with John. This is a staple of the Jim Harbaugh era is they don't rise to the occasion in a lot of ways. Um, they lose games they shouldn't, and they rarely win games that they uh, that they should not, right? They've never upset Michigan State or Ohio State when they've been favored. Really, if you look to last year, that Notre Dame game was the only time that I think most people thought, well, okay, Michigan is definitely the team that should lose here, although I think the spread was like one point at the at the end of the game, and they came in and just absolutely stomped them. Some people point to last week at Minnesota. We all turned, saw what kind of uh, you know fraudulent victory that one was. That's all for the Michigan Football Report. Thanks so much for following on Instagram at Michigan Football Report and getting those questions. I'm going to have some more on a show later this week. Subscribe to the channel by hitting this button right here if you haven't yet. Get us at 9,000 subscribers ASAP. If you want to see my instant reaction video from yesterday, I've got it for you right here. We'll see you back tomorrow. Go Blue.